Hello again, gents. Welcome back. One million subscribers. The number has well and truly gotten bigger. This video is a QA. and I asked you fellas to come up with a bunch of questions on this post, lots of which were really good, and some of which were not. And in this video, I'm going to give you my answers. So, let us begin. Alright, first question. A nice relaxed opener to get the audience invested. Would you consider yourself fat? Or obese? Thank you, Bubba Gaming. Do channel memes that you start ever annoy you or come back to haunt you? Yep. They don't really haunt me, but people spamming boat in the chat does actually get very unfunny after a while. Lucky for me though, for some mysterious reason, you guys decided to stop all at the exact same time. Curious. Mm. What's something you hate about your community? Uh, probably the, um... Uh, the fact that none of you play the greatest anime game ever created. Genshin Impact. I'm about to make an impact. Genshin Impact is an open world role-playing game. What roles can you play? Women. More specifically, anime women. Go on a massive adventure in Teva, where seven different elemental powers hold control. The game has recently updated to version 2.4. What does that mean? More content, new characters, a new map, new events, and new outfits. Play this game with your friends. Don't have any friends? Good, it's time to make some new friends. Introducing the returning characters, Zhongli and Ganyu. Take the new characters to the brand new map. And can I demand Real talk for a minute. Look at how goddamn gorgeous this game is. Holy shit, how do they do it? Look at this land and festival. Every single area looks freaking incredible. What if you want to farm? Done. What if you want to fight? Done. And what if you want to fish? Sorry I missed you, Carl. <laughs> I was on my other land. Once again, thank you to Genshin Impact for sponsoring this video. Use my link in the description to get it on iOS, Android, PC, or PS4, or 5. Do it. Right now. Okay. I'm going back to fishing. Goodbye. What's something you hate about your community? Uh, probably the, um... Uh, the people. Yeah, that's right. I actually really hate every single one of you on a personal level. If you ever approach me, I will not hesitate to kill you! How many hours do you have on Factorio? And is it really that addictive? 800 hours. Yes. What is your address? You would know, wouldn't you? Think about it. Where would I most likely live? What video are you most proud of? Inversely, which are you least proud of? Okay, most proud of, probably the KSP series. Least proud of, the first Factorio video. Now I just want to say, this Factorio video is the second most viewed Factorio video on all of YouTube, right behind my other Factorio video. So clearly, a lot of people do like it, but I find it very tedious. I mean, just listen to me. Biters. Enemy of the factory and haters of progress. And the loud haha funny words get old pretty quick. The KSP series is pretty cool. I've seen a few comments from people saying that they now study physics related subjects because of those videos, which I think is pretty amazing. Maybe it's real, I hope it's real. That'd be cool. Not only that, but I just straight up think they're my best work. What extremist political ideology do you subscribe to? Up here? Nah. Maybe here? Nah. Over here? Nah. How about here? Nah. I like it. Right here. Grill. Are you Australian? Yep. What's your cat's name? Also, what are his hobbies? <laughs> so I actually have two cats. This one is Arnie, and this one is Eddie. Eddie lives most of his life at the neighbor's house. Sometimes he comes over to our house and spends his time eating this plant and vomiting up a few hours later. And this is Arnie. His main hobby as of late has been staring at this particular patch in the garden for hours at a time. What is the workflow to make a video like? So I got a bunch of people asking roughly this question, so I thought I'd outline it in detail in another video. Probably on my second channel, so go subscribe there. What do you think about the current political situation in Ukraine? Oh, yep. When did the channel blow up? Right now. Well, to answer that question properly, I really need to go all the way back to the beginning. It's 2011, and I've just created my first YouTube channel. Following this, I discover Minecraft, the Yogscast, and NerdCubed. Hello, procrastinators! I see what they're doing. They play video game, they make video on video game, and get a lot of views. I could do that too. So I got some shitty screen recording software for my 2011 MacBook Pro, got my eight-year-old brother on a Minecraft server, and recorded and uploaded six videos to my brand new channel in one day. The results? Great success, unimaginable fame, and Oscar-winning performance. Is what I thought would happen. And dreamt about that night. What actually happened was nothing. No views whatsoever. Ten-year-old me was very sad. 
Not to worry, I made a few more videos here and there, one of which I remember managed to get 350 views, which I thought was pretty amazing. Then, radio silence. Ding dong, it's 2013. I've just started <laughs> high school and I've released another video, the first surviving video on this channel. This video is on the powder toy. I'm so high right now. Mm. It's not particularly interesting, but it's here. My next move was again, radio silence. Until 2014, when I uploaded a bunch of videos. These two are fronts to God, a Minecraft video, this Just Cause 2 video, which is interesting because it's called episode 6 and there aren't any other episodes on my channel, and these other two are fronts to God. Then, I pulled my signature move and didn't upload for another year. August 2015, I upload the first public video still remaining on my channel, Sleeping Dogs. <laughs> this is the first video I uploaded with my new PC. This PC to be exact, right there, which was a significant upgrade from the 2011 MacBook Pro. I made another two Sleeping Dogs videos, and then made a bunch of videos on Battlefield 4. Were they any good? Eh. I put this one on the Battlefield 4 subreddit, and it managed to get 450 views. Pretty cool. I uploaded a few more things in 2017, one more video in 2018 on Armor 3, and that was it. Radio silence. My 37 subscribers were left waiting. Now, as you can probably imagine, I've wanted to be a YouTuber for a very long time. But, I never had a consistent style or idea to make into a channel. But then, suddenly, I had an idea. I would make videos on games I liked. They would sort of be a review, but mainly I'd talk about why they're good. The style of these videos would mainly be influenced by these three YouTubers. The most important part, however, was the upload schedule. I promised myself I would take as long as I needed to make the video that I wanted. And so I did. I started work on my Civ 5 video script in a library at university. And four months later, it was done. Here's a view graph of the start of my channel, and here's the Civ 5 video. This was my first proper attempt at making a real YouTube video, and wasn't that bad. It got on average 10 views each day, many of them coming from Reddit and this clip. For a first attempt, not bad. I learned a lot. This gave me a pretty solid boost of motivation, and I got to work on my Just Cause 2 video, which I got done in like two and a half weeks, which is pretty much unheard of. The next video was the Factorio video. The one I said in hindsight was kind of crap. As you can see by the graph though, it did pretty good. On the release of this video, I had 80 subscribers, and over the next two months, that number grew to 153. Slow, but steady growth. June 2nd, 2020. I release my From the Depths video, and oh boy, does it do well. Um, After 30 days, I go from 153 subscribers to 25,000. All from this one video. Then I made this one, and that one, and then this one, and the subs went like, and then it was now. Any tips for someone who wants to do it too? That is, make YouTube videos? Yes. It's all about the grind set. If you're starting at basically zero, then you can't lose. Every video you make has a chance to pop off, and every time you don't pop off, you add another video for people to watch once you do. If you make good content and are self-aware enough to actually know if it's good, then you will succeed. It's not a matter of if, but when. I would add to that by saying quality is always better than quantity. No one wants to go through your back catalog of 2,000 Minecraft Let's Plays. Your videos need to be good. What made you want to speedrun Just Cause 3? Three gosh darn times. Well, the first time was a novelty, I wanted to see if it could even be done. The second one was mainly to try get other people to speedrun it since I thought a bit of competition would be fun. And the third was to assert my dominance. BAM! I'm curious what you've done as a study. Considering how you explain stuff in your KSP videos, you do seem somewhat familiar with physics. So did you study something in the STEM direction? Science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Yes, I did. So I've been playing KSP since about 2013, or since I was 12. So it's safe to say that it definitely had an impact on me growing up. In high school, I took a physics unit, which turned out to be my best subject. I didn't really study much in high school, which resulted in less than desirable marks for university. I wanted to do engineering, but didn't have the required grades to get there. So instead, I did physics. At university, I got my shit together, learned how to study, and did pretty well. Is that a frog? I didn't particularly like this university course. Sure, I liked physics, but the way it was taught was kind of shit. The main physics unit I did had no lectures that you could physically attend, <coughs> which I liked. Instead, it just had recorded videos that you watched online. Oh, how innocent. I was. Despite this, I got pretty good grades during my first year, and managed to transfer to a better uni doing aeronautical engineering. This was quite a lot more difficult, but they had physical lectures. For two months. Then, COVID hit. 
and pretty much the entire city went into lockdown. Now instead of one class with recorded lectures, every single class I had, had recorded lectures. I remember having a particularly smooth brain moment when my tutor announced there would be an assignment over Zoom. Me, not realizing my mic wasn't muted, went, Oh no! An assignment! <laughs> the tutor paused, I realized my mic wasn't muted, and I crawled under my table, in shame. I finished that semester and started on the next one when I decided I had enough of online nudie and deferred my studies for a year to try pursuing YouTube. That was October of 2020, and I had around 85,000 subscribers. The plan was to do YouTube full-time for a year and see where I could go. Well, it's been over a year, and uh, I'm not going back anytime soon. If you stack two lasagnas on top of each other, do you end up with one or two lasagnas? One lasagna, just bigger. Do you ever fear that if YouTube or Twitch somehow die, you aren't in a position to stay financially stable? Now, I used to think this a while ago, but no, not really. YouTube is absolutely huge. In 2020 alone, viewers spent 100 billion hours watching gaming content on YouTube. That's 11 million years. It's the second biggest website in the world behind Google. Literal billions of people use YouTube every day, so I really don't see it going anywhere. What is far more likely is people lose interest in my channel for whatever reason, and that's it. Channel's dead. What car did you get? For those who don't know, after the Battlefield video was released, I let myself buy a car, which I've now done. It's this, a 2020 Mazda MX-5. I've already driven it about 2,000 kilometers, and it's very, very nice. How does having such a large community impact your video production? Do you feel pressure to keep the fanbase happy? Do you ever worry it could spiral out of control and turn into something you don't like? Okay, so in terms of the fans, they don't really have an impact. To be completely honest, I don't really care about what the fans want. But if I find the video funny or interesting in some way, then I'm gonna make it. People ask all the time if I could make a video on this game or look into this thing, but no. I don't want to, so I won't. As for it spiraling out of control, not really. I think I would have to do something very dumb for that to happen, so I will simply not. Do you like Spaniel? Um, how long did you sleep after your 18 odd hour Just Cause 3 speedruns? Well, the first one I don't really remember. The second stream, however, I do. Not only was it more stressful than the previous one, but it was still really, really long. When I went to bed that morning, it was dark and around 3 or 4 a.m. And when I woke up, it was dark and around 7 or 8 p.m. Then I had dinner and went back to bed and slept until it was bright again the next day. Needless to say, that run completely killed me. How do you get good at voiceovers? Also, what's your process of writing scripts? Voiceovers. It's really pretty simple. Practice. I like to voice out stuff as I write the script, which offers plenty of practice for reading it. The place where I tend to get the most ideas tends to either be sitting on the toilet taking a shit, or in the shower. <laughs> also, just speaking louder. This is honestly the easiest way to make a voiceover sound better. If you think you're being too loud, move back from the microphone a bit, and speak louder. <laughs> as for writing scripts, I don't know. I'll be touching on this more in the video production video, so once again, subscribe to my second channel. Right up there. Just click it right there. I, I know you want to. Why did you choose the Rainbow Frog as your character? Were there any other characters that you used before the frog? Okay, the Rainbow Frog was my YouTube profile picture, which I had when I released my Civ 5 video, so I just kept it. I have no idea what the picture was before the frog, and to be honest, I don't really care. Why did you choose to name your channel Martin Cedar Pants? Pretty simple. It was the name my dad gave to my first email address. I then used it as my Minecraft username, and eventually used it for everything else. How do you decide on the kind of high-paced, whimsical humor? How big of a part does your editing play in it? And do you think getting another editor would make your vids lose some of that charm? Okay, so I never really decided what sort of humor I'd have. I just make stuff that I find funny. The high pace is simply a result of me having less and less patience. Once again, if you watch your own videos 50 times over before releasing it, you know which parts are boring, and which aren't. In terms of editing, I think that's really where the funny comes out. Sure, I do write in jokes to the script, You'll be sitting on the toilet taking a shit, but editing is really where they come alive. Now, about having an editor, right now I don't, I do all the editing myself, but I am planning on getting some for my second channel. If you've worked with other YouTubers and know your way around editing software, do not be afraid to hit me up. How does it feel to be the only frog who- <laughs> Who what? Do you have motivation to start and finish a series like KSP, or do you just kind of hop from video and game whenever you feel like it? So this may shock you, but I never hop from video to video. If I did this, I'd start videos all the time, and finish videos none of the time. So why then are the KSP videos so spaced out, you may be wondering? Well, it's a deliberate decision. If I make four KSP videos in a row, then people are going to think the whole channel is about KSP. But it's not. The channel's about me. Me. Does your throat ever get hurt by screaming so much? Yes. Do you like to suffer? 
Yes! What recording software and editing software do you use? OBS Studio, Audacity, and Adobe Premiere Pro. OBS Studio is the industry standard screen recording and streaming software these days, and is completely free, so use it. Audacity is good for recording stuff like voiceovers and is also free, and in terms of editing, the exact software doesn't really matter. It's about how you use it. If you want some good editing software, I'm told DaVinci Resolve is decent and free, so you might as well give it a go. Are there any video games that you would want to make a video on, but just don't know how to tackle them? Now, I made the mistake of leaving my laptop out while Tristan was in the house, so we answered this question with this. <clears throat> I tackle them by taking a huge shit on the toilet. Usually. But sometimes, I like to sit back in my room, completely naked. Thanks, Tristan. What would be two pieces of advice you'd give to someone struggling to find their style of content creation? Alrighty, number one, make more stuff. Again, if you're starting at zero, there isn't any downside in experimenting. See what you enjoy making, and then make it. And don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. Number two, don't give up or move on until the video is done. If you give yourself permission to scrap your first videos, then you won't ever make anything. They're not gonna be great, but that's okay. Don't give up, and before you know it, you'll have made something. Are you going to wrap up the KSP Kevin conundrum? Hmm... Perhaps. How much time do you put into your videos? I'm not talking about the editing, I mean like how long does it take for you to record all the stuff you do? Every time you release a video, it seems you've put days of playtime into it. So a lot of people have asked how long it takes to edit, but that's really only half the story. Playing the game, writing the script, and collecting footage can also be an incredibly long process. For the Battlefield 2042 video, for instance, I spent almost 100 hours playing that game, trying to find interesting stuff. For the Factorio video, we spent around 85 hours on that single world, and for my most recent Just Cause 3 video, I must have spent over 100 hours planning out and practicing parts of the route. Then, I need to write the script, which is often a painful and long process full of uncertainty and me thinking that all this time spent in the game was wasted. Then, begins editing, which is relatively enjoyable and takes another two or so weeks. None of the steps in making video are really all that fun. They're quite fulfilling, but they aren't fun. But, you know, it's my job. That's life. How much did you invest in starting your YouTube slash streaming stuff? So, I started with a decent enough computer setup and a crap headset mic on my HyperX Cloud 2s. The very first thing I invested in was this USB microphone. I don't even know what it's called, but it cost me around 90 Australian dollars and is good enough. Fun fact, the arm that it sits on is more expensive than the microphone itself. How much do you bench press? 70 kilos for one rep and 60 kilos for 10 reps. Not particularly incredible, but like most things, it's a process. Maybe in a year I'll give you guys an update, and we can see where we're at. Have you considered streaming more than your current stream rate of I stream whenever I require a deep vein thrombosis CBT to escape my mother's cooking? Okay, first of all, my mum cooks great food. So shut up. Secondly, yes. I want to try streaming on Twitch consistently. Now that I'm big YouTube man, it's time to weasel my way into the Twitch community like a parasitic tapeworm. Good evening. Twitch is going to be my next big venture. I'll try streaming each workday, but I may have to cut that down if it's too much, and then I'll take the footage from those streams, throw them at an editor to make into shorter videos, and then I'll upload said videos on my second channel with hopefully some consistency. Ultimately, this means more content for you. In what way has your content improved over time, and what would you tell your past self about making it on YouTube? Okay, so most noticeably, the voiceovers and the pacing. My older videos have a more dead sounding mart. For instance, purchasing great people with faith. For instance, just purchasing great people with- Just speak up! And have much longer intros that are kind of boring. As for advice for past me, I'd just tell them the video ideas that worked well, and tell them not to make a Battlefield 2042 tier list. Pretty simple. What other creators do you take inspiration from, slash enjoy the most? Quite a few. Here's the list I compiled from my current subscriptions. These people range from current favourites to old classics that I don't really watch anymore, but definitely had an impact on me. If you see your name here, say hello. You've seen very rapid growth in what many would consider a short amount of time. What's your feelings on this burst in popularity? Also, early congratulations on a million subscribers. Thank you. I'll be honest, it feels good. But I know I'll get used to it soon. There's a psychology term for this effect called the hedonic treadmill. Basically, you get used to better situations very quickly, and are always left wanting more. That being said, I don't take it for granted, I am very grateful, but every time I think about my YouTube channel, it doesn't just instantly fill me with joy and cure my every woe. And finally, many people asked, will you ever reveal your face? Yes.